in my last video, we explored using QGIS with Affinity. And one of you asked me to do a video for crafting minimalistic maps using QGIS and Affinity. Well, today we're diving right into that. I'll show you step by step how to combine the strengths of QGIS for spatial data with the design flexibility of Affinity to create sleek, minimalistic maps. Before we jump into Affinity, let's start with QGIS. First, we'll install the Quick OSM plugin using the Plugins menu. This plugin will allow us to load customized OpenStreetMap data. Type in OSM in the search box to filter the list, select Quick OSM and press the Install Plugin button. After it is installed, we can close the plugins window. Now that we have our plugin installed, we can start by creating a new document. To get a map on the screen, I need the browser panel, which I can enable from the View Panels menu. From the browser panel, we can now enable the OpenStreetMap tiles available under the XIZ Tiles group. When we double-click on it, it will be added as a layer in our Layers panel. With the help of my mouse scroll wheel, I can now zoom into an area I want to create a map of. Let's go with Berlin. Once I have the area I want to map on my screen, I can open up the Quick OSM plugin from the toolbar or from the vector menu. If you start the plugin for the very first time, you get a copyright disclaimer. After accepting the copyright disclaimer, the plugin window will open up. We can now enter a query to get data from OpenStreetMap. For the minimalistic map we are going to create, we are only interested in the roads. So I'll type in highway as the key and primary as value. This will return primary roads. I'll add a couple of more entries to get other interesting road types. For more information about what you can query from OpenStreetMap, check out the link in the description to the OpenStreetMap wiki page. The data in OpenStreetMap is quite well structured and using the Quick OSM plugin, you can query exactly what you need. After specifying the query, let's now specify for which area by using the in drop-down box. We'll select Canvas Extend, which will return only data for the shown map on the screen. Now we can press the Run Query button. This will start the data download process. Depending on your map, this may take a while, especially for big cities with a lot of roads. I would advise to start testing with a small zoomed area. Once the data is loaded, the plugin will add two layers to our document. It is not exactly what I want, but we can customize how the retrieved data is going to be shown. Let's first turn off the OpenStreetMap Tiles layer. The first layer shows the data mapped as dots and the second layer has the roads. As mentioned, we can customize how the road data we downloaded is rendered. To customize the road layer, we can right-click on the layer and select Properties from the pop-up menu. In the Symbology tab, we can see that all the roads are shown as a single symbol. I want to have different thicknesses for each road type, so I'll need to categorize it for the key we used to query the data, which was Highway. So first, let's change the top drop-down to Categorized, and then for the value, we can either enter Highway or use the Expression Builder. Here we have the option to quickly search for the key we're looking for. I'll add the Highway key to the expression and press OK. To apply the key change, we need to press the Classify button. Now, as you can see, we have different line colors for each road type. Let me press OK to apply the changes. Again, depending on the complexity and the details on your map, this might take a while especially with a big city with a lot of roads like in my case. Anyway, give it some time to process and once it is done, you'll get something like this. Notice now how the roads have different colors based on the category of the road. We can also enable or disable different categories if necessary. Actually, we can go and export this to Affinity, but before exporting, I'm going to do a little bit more customization. From the layer styling panel, I can right-click on a road category and change some basic properties. I'll quickly go through the road categories and adjust the stroke width depending on the importance of the road. 
that looks much more interesting. I didn't make changes in the colors as we can change that in Affinity Photo and probably I'm going to make everything black and white anyway. Time to export it. As shown in my previous video, to export it we need to create a print layout. I'll set the print canvas to A5 and add the map. Once I have positioned my map on the canvas, I'll use the export to SVG function in the print layout screen. If I'm going too fast, definitely check my previous video where I explain these steps in more detail. Now that we have our map with the roads as an SVG file, we can start Affinity Photo and apply the final finishing touches. In Affinity Photo, I'll start by adding a new document and let's use the same A5 format we used in QGIS. I'll drag and drop the SVG file on our canvas to import it. Now I want to copy all the curves from the embedded file into our main canvas. We can do this by double clicking on the embedded layer. It is possible that this will not work. This is probably due to the fact that the file has been imported as a linked file. You can quickly check this on the toolbar when you select the imported layer. Notice how it says linked document. In this case, remove the layer and set the placement policy to embedded from the file menu. When you now place or drag and drop the SVG, it will be imported as an embedded file instead of a linked file. I can now double click on the embedded layer and Affinity will open the embedded file in a new tab. I'll select everything I need and quickly group it. Once I have my group, I'll copy the group with the command or Ctrl C keyboard shortcut and then close the embedded document. Back in the main document, I'll remove the embedded layer and press Command or Ctrl V to paste the group we copied earlier. As you can see, I have all the roads as curves in my document. Sadly, they are not grouped by category. But here is a super handy tip. When exporting the map as an SVG from QGIS, enable the Export Map Layers as SVG Groups checkbox in the Export Options. But before we export with this turned on, we first need to make sure that all the road categories are in a separate layer. The easiest way is by duplicating our initial layer and then enabling only one road category. Once I have done that for all the road categories, I now have separate layers for each road type. Now I can go back to the print layout dialog and export with the option layers as SVG groups. Excellent! Back in Affinity, I can now import this new SVG. Notice that we now have groups in the embedded file. I'll copy them over to the main document just as before and remove the embedded layer. Now we have our groups, we can easily customize each road category in Affinity. Pretty awesome! I'll change the stroke properties of each group and make the lines black and before you know it we have a great looking minimalistic map. I'll add a rectangle and clip the map inside it. Finally, to wrap up, let's add some information about the map. If you're planning to share this map, don't forget to add the OpenStreetMap disclaimer to your artwork. One quick tip, if you need the GPS location, you can copy this from QGIS. Right click on the map and copy the coordinates of your mouse position. By the way, you don't need QGIS to create a map like this. We can also create it without QGIS by using the OpenStreetMap website directly. Once you have the area of interest showing in your browser, you can export the visible map as an SVG by using the share function of the OpenStreetMap website. This will export all the visible layers and we need to manually remove everything that is not interesting in Affinity. A quick way to select the various objects for removal is by using the Select Same menu item in Affinity Designer. This will allow us to select objects with the same color and or stroke. It's a tedious process, but after spending some time and being patient, we can create a nice minimalistic map at the end. I think this method took about 3 times longer compared to the QGIS method. Anyway, I hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before leaving. Until the next video.